how to plant in things without drainage holes. Now, if anybody knows me, you know I'm a huge fan of Goodwill. I love Goodwill. And when I go to Goodwill, I always find stuff, and I'm like, I want to put a plant in it. I want to put a plant in that. I want to plant, put a plant in anything I get a plant in. But I don't like having to get out a drill. I don't like having to get out a ceramic drill bit. I'm afraid I'm going to hurt myself. Usually I make my husband do it. I'm not very coordinated. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So one of the things I do is I use something called LECA or I use pebbles or depending on how big the pot is, even rocks. And what that does is it allows the water to drain away from the plant into the bottom of, of the planter or the bowl or the pot or whatever it is that you found and prevents the roots from rotting. And you can put a plant in anything. Leca is nothing but terracotta that's been kiln fired that is waterproof and lightweight. Um, we usually use this in starting roots on cuttings or in hydroponic and aquaponic systems so that you can grow plants in water um, without having to use soil at all. I want to do something um, in a really, really small container. So if you're looking at something that's this small, the LECA tends to be a little bit too big. It's going to take up a lot of space. And it doesn't mean that I don't do it sometimes, but if I'm doing a really small container, I like to use something like tiny little pebbles. So I'll do little tiny pebbles. They take up less space in the bottom. And you can even use pebbles you find on the playground, in your backyard, in your landscaping. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. I want to do something that's a little more attractive. So I sometimes like to get river rock. And I have gray river rock, I have white river rock. It's pretty big, but once I pour the water in on the plant, it's actually really, really pretty. Now, if I'm gonna do water and soil, I'll still put these in the bottom, and it makes kind of a cool layered look, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. If I'm gonna use just water for things that can live in just water, like um, peace lilies, or different kinds of philodendron cuttings, um, pothos with philodendrons, super easy to grow in water, uh, I will do just rocks, pebbles, le leca, or something really pretty and decorative like this. I'll show you how. So now that I've showed you what LECA is, you can really plant in just about anything you want. If you have a container that is shaped like this picture, which I think is super pretty, and this was my grandmother's, and I love to grow stuff in this, I do it all the time, this picture is really deep and it's more narrow at the bottom. So if I put pebbles, rocks, or LECA in here, it really is good for draining because they're gonna be down here toward about the bottom third and that means that if I accidentally overwater, there's room for that water to go down and the roots won't sit in it. And really that's the whole point of planting like this, is if you plant in something without drainage and then you pour water in there, well the plants are just gonna sit there and the roots are gonna rot. But the leka, the pebbles, it allows space and air below the roots. So excess water can drip down in there and because there's a little bit of air, because you have these pebbles and these pieces of leka, it will help them dry. Um, you can do this with succulents. You can do this with pretty much any kind of plant, even something that doesn't want to grow in pure water. But you have to think about how you water things. So instead of pouring water, like we tend to do with pitchers or watering cans, you're going to make a mistake eventually, because we all do, even me, and you don't want to pour too much water. If you do pour too much water, go ahead and unplant the plant, because that plant doesn't get to dry out if it's overfilled and there's enough water to cover the leca or the pebbles in the bottom. So the solution to that's not bad. You're just going to empty out the plant, empty out the soil, the leca, and then redo it. You can leave the soil out to dry for a little bit and just keep the roots of the plant in a little bit of water, a little bit of moistened soil, um, but or just put in new soil. So I'm going to show you how to make something really cool. I'm going to show it to you in that glass vase I have so you can see the different ways that I can do it. Watch. Okay, so I've got my glass vase and I want it to look extra pretty. So I'm going to use my white rocks. I'm not going to just pour them in because they are rocks and I don't want to damage my glass. And I'm going to usually do about the last third of whatever I'm planting in.
Now, I love doing this in clear containers because you get to see everything. It's like a little science experiment. So I have the option of just growing certain kinds of plants in just water and the pebbles. Like I said, again, peace lilies are wonderful. They'll grow in pure water. They don't care about soil. Um, various kinds of um, philodendrons, vining plants, they'll grow just fine. If you can start the roots of a cutting in pure water, that plant will be okay. You are going to need to add some nutrients, and I'll show you a couple of those things also, because if you're just using water, then they're not gonna have soil to pull nutrients from, but that's easy to do. I'm just gonna go with a plant that likes water. I'm gonna use a peace lily, because I have a lot of those, and I already grow them in water in my fountain. I'm gonna show you how to plant in something that's really tiny like this little guy. Again, it doesn't have any drainage, and I wanna fill about the bottom third. Now I can use little tiny pebbles. In this case, I'm gonna use small pieces of LECA. And in any kind of LECA, you're gonna have a variation of shapes and sizes. And I'm gonna again, fill about the last third of it. Probably two more than that. And I'm gonna put a snake plant in here. They don't need a huge amount of water. They'll survive just about anything. I swear they will survive a nuclear holocaust. But it's something that doesn't need a whole lot of water, so I don't need to water it terribly often. I'm going to add some soil. And I've already picked out, here it is, a bird's nest snake plant. Now, you're probably used to seeing snake plants that get really tall, like this guy. But a bird's nest is not going to get huge. They grow fairly fast, so you may need to replant it maybe in a year. They don't grow that fast, but this is the one I'm going with, and it's just a baby I took from another bird's nest. And it is really little, and it doesn't have a huge amount of roots, so it's not going to take up a lot of space. Any plant, like snake plants, for instance, that may have a large root start at the bottom, they might not fit in something this small. So you kind of want to think about the scale of what you're planting. So I'm just going to stick her in here, and I'm going to add some soil next. Now, if I'm going to use soil, I like to go with the soil that's really nutritious. I like to go with things like um, Fox Farm. It's one of those things where it just has so many nutrients that a plant in a really small container like this is gonna be pretty happy. So, we're gonna do soil. Pour my soil around her. I'm not gonna compress it too hard because again, I want this plant to have a little bit of air around the roots and I don't want her to sit in too much moisture but I don't wanna compact my soil because then she's not gonna be able to breathe and excess water is just going to make it really hard, wet, and the roots are not gonna be able to move and grow through it the way they want to. And this is where the way you water really matters. If you just poured water into this container, the LECA will have too much water sitting in it, and then the roots are going to be just sitting in the water. See, there's this little, there's this tiny. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to water something this small. One thing that I sell at my boutique are little spray bottles. They're pretty, but more importantly, they're fairly safe. You're only going to be spraying water. You're not going to be pouring water. Pouring water, no, no. Anything that's small, even if it has a drainage hole, I tell people to just spray it. Or my actual favorite thing, which is here. I love these. These are fantastic because they let me kind of control how much water I'm using. And I and know I'm not just gonna pour a huge amount in because I can do small amounts. And with a snake plant, she doesn't need a lot of water. They don't wanna be soaking wet. So she already, already has moist soil. That's about it. I'll come back and check her tomorrow. And I'm gonna put in most plants Something this small about the first part of my pinky or even down to the bottom of my pinky. And I'm gonna stick it all the way down in there. And if it still feels a little bit moist, I know it's fine. I'm not gonna water it again. I'm not even gonna spray it again. If it's a larger plant, especially something like this, ficus do not like a huge amount of water. They will get upset. And I also have decorative rocks on top. So I'm just gonna shoo those little rocks and I'm gonna use my pointer finger and I'm gonna go about halfway down to my knuckle. And if it feels somewhat moist, a little tiny bit of soil is actually sticking to my fingers, 
she's fine. I'm going to leave her alone, especially because she's in a container without drainage and the type of plant that she is. She's not going to want a lot of water, and I want to make sure that I don't make this plant suffer because ficus are kind of sensitive. Um, and if I do make a mistake, it is a pain in the butt, but I will unplant the whole plant and then repot it because even just a few days of sitting in rotten water, some plants will be upset right away and you're not going to be able to recover them. So it does matter what kind of plants you're choosing to do these projects with. I love philodendron and there are so many kinds. There are so many kinds and really common ones like you'll find um, like this Swiss, Swiss cheese philodendron or again pothos. They are great because they'll grow just fine in water and if you do over water really it's going to be okay. They're pretty good. I mean this one I started she needs fresh water because I haven't changed it in like two weeks but she's going to be just fine and because she already has good roots started once I put her in some soil, she's going to be just fine. If it doesn't have roots sort of already growing yet and it is just a clipping, go ahead and wait until you've had some time to develop good strong roots before you put it in a pot, whether it's a pot with drainage or not. This messy thing is right out of my little fountain pond that I put inside my house. And she has really good roots. I mean, she's a happy plant. But I like to look at the roots. I think it's kind of cool to see them. And putting it in something that's see-through is, I like it. It's great. So, here we go. Well, I'm literally just going to put some water in it. But I'm going to show you how to put some nutrients in it. Because, for instance, when we do aquaponics and hydroponics systems, there have to be nutrients. There's got to be nitrogen. There's got to be um, a, very, a, a variety of things. So if you're doing an aquaponic system, the fish pea is what's doing it for you. If you're doing a hydroponic system, you're adding nutrients um, into the water for the plants. In this case, I'm going to add some nutrients in here, and it's something that just kind of boosts the roots when they get going, and it's not going to make the water brown or cloudy like uh, fertilizers or foods will, and you don't need to do it very often. It's a product called Super Thrive. No, I don't represent them, and I don't get paid to do so. But when I worked in a greenhouse, that was something we used anytime we were starting or if we saw a plant that was suffering that wasn't doing well and they will perk up. So, hold on. I'm going to secure her because she does have kind of a funny root shape. I'm going to secure her with the rocks to make sure that once she is in, she's not going to topple over. And I kind of want her to be centered because I'm a little bit OCD and I want things to be symmetrical. She has a couple of leaves. I don't like the look of them. I'm just going to snip them off real quick. Then she'll spend her energy making new healthy leaves instead of these yucky leaves that aren't really doing her any favors. Be kind of cool looking. Right. Right. Okay, the water is important. Not only am I going to add some nutrients to it because it's just pure water, but I am not going to use tap water. Now, if you've watched my other videos, you know that I, I tell people that minerals and metals in typical water that you'll get from your faucet those are going to mess up plant roots, especially little baby plant roots. It also will live, leave yucky rings around and it just it looks tacky. I don't want to have a mineral buildup on the inside of my pot. That's really hard to get off. So I'm going to use either filtered water. You can use something filtered like Brita. You can use, you know, like a, something you attach to your sink. You can use bottled water, preferably I do distilled water when I'm doing something like this, just to make sure I don't get any of those rings and I'm not adding anything unnecessary that's going to affect the roots. Brands, of course, don't matter. I just pulled the label off this one. And you don't need to go all the way up to the top, really. You just need to cover the roots. And then all of a sudden it starts looking really cool as if you have your own tiny little fountain or something inside. And for little kids, they love this. They like to see the roots. They like to see them grow. The roots will eventually kind of wrap around and twist into the rocks and it looks even cooler. Now, I do switch out the water, but not that often. But I don't put clear things like this in too much light. Of course, the plant needs light. These little leaves are great because they need low light. They don't need a bunch. But if you put it in a really hot or sunny area, it's going to grow algae. So next I'm going to talk to you about the nutrients that I'm going to add to that water to make sure she's getting what she needs. Super Thrive. And you can buy this pretty much anywhere. You can get it on Amazon. You can buy it at local nurseries. Uh, I'm 
Don't know if Home Depot and Lowe's have it, but generally you can pick it up pretty much anywhere. What is cool about this is a little teeny tiny bottle is gonna last you a really long time. It says one drop per four ounces. So some people are way more careful. They will literally measure out, you know, just one drop. For me, I've got a really small hole punctured into the top. And that is so I can kind of control how much is coming out of the bottle. Now, I don't have an exact measurement of how much water is in that little container, but I'm just gonna do a few drops. This will last for so long. Even on big plants, you don't have to use very much. And for starters, little tiny roots, they will just eat it up and they love it and it doesn't have any negative side effects. It's not gonna burn your roots the way fertilizers can. I am just gonna add a few drops. And I'm just gonna swish it around a bit. And that's really all she needs to get started. Now, every once in a while, I will give her food and the product I like, and again, I don't work for these companies, I don't get paid to sponsor them, but this is stuff that I actually use and that I used in the greenhouse when we were growing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of plants. Um, a little bit goes a long way on this too. I have hundreds and hundreds of plants here in my house, including the babies that I sell. So I get a really big one. You can buy way smaller bottles and they will last a long time. It is two ounces per gallon. So when you're doing something really small, you need so little. And unlike things like Super Thrive and some kinds of fertilizers, which you really need to use the same day that you pour them out, this is the kind of thing where you can mix up a gallon and stick it under the sink until you need it again. It's not going to affect the way that it works. It's still going to feed them. They need food about once a month when they're growing. Um, in things that have water, then I do about once a month um, year round, just because they don't have soil to draw other minerals and nutrients from. So I'm gonna put just a teeny tiny little bit, less than a teaspoonful, and there are two reasons for that. One, she's simply not gonna need more than that. And two, it has some color because it's a brown color. And I really don't wanna ruin the look of my nice clear water because that was the whole point of doing it in a glass container. So I'm gonna do it with this, but I'm gonna use a really small amount and it's not gonna look bad and I will show you up close. Even though I said I'm gonna use about a teaspoon, I'm gonna eyeball it. I've been doing this long enough, I'm fine with it. If you don't wanna eyeball it, just read the label and kind of guesstimate how much you're actually gonna need. And I'm gonna pour a teeny tiny bit in the cap. And I'm not gonna fill the cap. I'm literally gonna use the smallest little amount. I don't want it to be brown and I don't want too much in there. So, I mean, I'm probably using less than half of a teaspoon, honestly. Okay, so I'm gonna pour it in. Really, really teeny tiny amount in here. I'm switch it around a little bit, like so. And it did add a tiny amount of color, but it still looks like a really pretty natural plant. And you can see everything that's going on inside. I love it, I love it so much. Now, I put the Super Thrive in. I put a little bit of plant food. The water's not too yucky and it's not too brown or anything like that. And it looks actually a little bit more natural now. And then it's gonna be a happy plant for a really long time. I sell a whole lot of these at my boutique because they make plant watering really, really easy for small plants. They also do two things. If you have a plant that's more tropical and it needs more moisture and humidity around it, this is great for spraying the leaves. Again, use distilled or bottled water so that you are not causing little um, like mineral stains on the leaves. So, I'm doing something like this where it's a succulent in a pot with no drainage and succulents don't want a lot of water. It does have LECA in the bottom of it just to make sure that it is draining properly, but she's getting pretty dry. Now she doesn't necessarily need any water on her leaves. What I want people to do when I say spray the plant is not really about the leaves so much as it is spraying the soil. So if I'm spraying the soil and I'm doing it on a regular basis and something this small, I'm less likely to drown it and I have a little more control over how much water I'm actually putting in it. So I can use my little thing that I love, but on a plant like this, it's not really necessary even to use this much water. So I'm gonna spray directly on the soil. 
And with a succulent, you know, you don't need a whole lot. So I'm not gonna be standing here for 15 or 20 minutes trying to do this. I'm just gonna stand here. And a lot of times I like to count how many sprays I do. That way I kind of am more consistent. So I, with this guy, he's a little bit extra dry. So I'm gonna count probably about 10. I think I've done four or five maybe. You know, the chopsticks that you get um, that are free when you go buy sushi at the grocery store, those are great because you can see on the, the bamboo whether it's moist and you can stick it down in a really small plant pot like this, pull it out and take a look at it and you can see just like you would with your finger. In this plant, because she is so little, it's hard to get my finger in there, but I'll kind of do just in the corner here and it's moist on top. It's probably not very moist in the bottom. So I'm going to give her a few more because she is quite dry. I kind of left her alone so I could use her as a good example today. And that should do for her. And like I said, I'll come back and check her again and make sure that she really did get what she needed. But for a succulent, that's pretty good. She's going to be happy with that. Um, I think that's pretty much it. We've planted in all kinds of fun things that did not have drainage holes. I showed you that there are a lot of varieties of plants that you can use to do this with. And at the end of the video, I'll list a few of those plants you can use and I'll list the names of the products that I actually use. So I hope that this video is helpful. Leave me comments about what you wanna see more videos about and look forward to the next ones that are coming because I always have more to talk about with plants. I will never get bored. Like and subscribe. See you later guys, bye.